Hi, in this problem we're going to evaluate this limit. So the first rule when evaluating limits is to take this number and plug it in for the x. If you do that, you're going to end up with the square root of c minus the square root of c on the bottom. And that's going to give us 0. That's not very good because we are not allowed to have 0 on the bottom. So we need a new strategy. And I'm going to show you what that new strategy is. So we have the limit as x approaches c. So in the numerator, we should still have this. And I'm just going to rewrite it again one more time. And that strategy is called rationalizing. We're going to multiply by what's called the conjugate. So basically, whenever you have something like this with square roots, you want to multiply it by the conjugate. So the conjugate of this would be the square root of x plus the square root of c. You just flip the sign and do the same thing here just like that. The reason you do it on the top and on the bottom is because uh, you're basically multiplying by one, right? So we're not really doing anything except multiplying by one. And the reason we're doing this is because now we're going to use a very powerful formula. So recall if you have, and I'll squeeze it in down here, you have a minus b times a plus b that's equal to a squared minus b squared. I'm going to put this uh, in a box. So this is not part of the problem, just showing you this as a side note so you see what it is. And so here in this problem, we're going to apply this formula now. So we have the limit as x approaches c. So in the numerator, we're still going to have x minus c. And then the square root of x plus the square root of c. Nothing. Nothing is going to change there. We're just going to leave that uh, just the way it is. All of the magic is going to happen on the bottom in the denominator. So here, our a is the square root of x and our b is the square root of c. You see, it, it, it's lined up perfectly. a is the square root of x, b is the square root of c. So this will be a squared minus b squared. So this is basically going to be uh, the square root of x squared minus the square root of c squared. So it's just going to be, well, that squared is x and that squared is c, right? Because it's, I'll, I'll show it here in a different color so it's not confusing. It's the square root of x squared minus the square root of c squared. And when you square the square root of x, you just get x, okay? When you square the square root of c, you just get c. So we get that. And look at that, boom, super awesome, right? We get rid of that super annoying x minus c. That was the reason, well, that wasn't the reason, but that, that is allowing us now to do the problem and finish. And then we're left with just this piece here, right? Cool, square root of x plus the square root of c. I'm gonna put parentheses here just to make it look a little bit prettier. And now we're at a point where we can actually plug in the value of x. And when we do that, we always drop the limit sign. So we're left with the square root of c plus the square root of c. So we have two of these, so we just get two square root of c. All right, there's one of them here, one of them here. One square root of c plus one square root of c is two square root of c. It's just like x, right? x plus x is two x, same thing. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Good luck.